Good news today. It, it cranks over. Doesn't run because I don't have a fuel tank in it yet and I don't have a fuel system at all in it. But it runs, as in it cranks, it turns over. I'll, uh, I'll show you what I've done just because I'm excited, so I'll share it. So you can see my beautiful uh, wiring job here. Um, where do I start? So before I went underneath the car a few days ago, just with the jumper pack and the starter motors down there, and I just, you know, tested the starter motor to see if it would run. I put the positive on it, and then I linked the... Um, signal uh, plug to the positive 12 volt power and it cranked on which was wonderful because I didn't want to pull the whole gearbox off to change the starter motor so I'm happy that thing works I hope I never have to change the starter motor because it's a big job the engine has to come out for it because of many reasons anyway it worked so it was good I started doing some wiring um, picked up a spare loan battery from um my dad's house, um, it's actually my brother's, but he's allowing me to use it. You can see my wonderful wiring job here, trying to work out other people's um, ideas of awesome wiring. Um, all the labels that are on these things um, have been done by myself because they weren't labeled and it's taken at least two or three weeks to try and work all of these little bits and pieces out. But the good news is I got the signal wire from the start key. So this is from the barrel ignition, the key. Um, I found the signal wire from there that goes down to here, which the starter motor used to be on this side of the engine when it had the original 18RG engine in it. Traced it all the way down to the uh, starter, powered it up, earthed it, um, had to run a, this is red, it should be black, but I don't have any more black, so I earthed the starter motor directly to um, the chassis, just because the whole engine actually hasn't been earthed yet. So this is now my earth from the engine. It cranked over, turned the key, little solenoid thing went click when it went through the AC mode, and then finally on the final turn, it cranked over. I will put a video of that um, for you in a second. So that was great success. Uh, I now have to clean up all these wires and make it look pretty. The other thing I had to do was check if it's got spark. So I had to pull my spark plugs out, um, which broke my little spark plug puller right here. So I then had to <laughs> super cleanly weld it back on again. This won't come off. Finally took them out. Because um, I was questioning whether the ECU was actually powered up correctly. Um, have a look at this mess down here. Look at that. Like, how is anyone supposed to understand what is going on in this car with a mess like that? But I've been following diagrams and I'm slowly getting there. But any hooties, turn the key and it should start, which well, I have to two hands to unlock this thing, which is a pain in the ass. Alrighty, so this should start when I turn it. Solenoid clicked. Turn the key. Woohoo! Happy as Larry. Now the most important thing was getting spark. And I have success. Oh, you can't really see it on camera because the frame rate's different. And there you see spark. So I am one happy chappy. I need to put the spark plug back in and now tidy up all my wires and route them properly, put proper fittings on them so they don't have to come apart again. And at least the ignition side of things looks to be done. I say that with um, out a great deal of confidence. So yeah, this is um, where I'm at right now. This is just a quick little snippet. Um, fingers crossed we can go step by step until we have a running engine. I still don't have the fuel tank. I still don't have the fuel system in it. I still got the uh, fuel pump up on the bench over there. So next step is fuel. And as long as everything's plugged into where it needs to go, like oxygen sensors and crank angle sensors and all this other kind of stuff, that should fire. Looking forward to it.
Alrighty, so off the success of getting the car cranking, um, I've just been tidying up a bunch of wires in the engine bay. Everything's marked now. Uh, horn, headlights, high beam lights, um, the washer motor. This one here, the um, ignition coil register, I don't even know if that's used with this engine, so it can just stay there labelled, it's out of the way. If I don't need it, I'll actually remove the wire from the loom at a later date. Um, that might be an oil pressure switch, but I don't think it's needed. I'm not sure yet. We'll see what the gauges are inside the car. But yeah, I've like run all the wires for the... Um, for everything kind of neatened up and, and tidied to an extent it still needs a lot of tidying up but at least it's manageable um, all these wires are now in place relatively um, yeah, out of the way and, and easy to work on easy to follow so if i need to find something i know where it is now um, so this is again just kind of quickly wired up just for uh, testing um, what i need to test as I'm plugging everything back in bit by bit um, that works so I'm happy with that uh, one of the main accessory wires off the barrel was not connected and I was wondering why nothing was working but I connected it underneath the dash and now I've got my indicators are flicking the headlights you can hear them click on low beam high beam but there's no globes but you can hear the uh, whatever the heck this thing's called, clicking away. Um, yeah, washers work, which means these things turn. Um, and I've just, I've been looking at this, and uh, this is the reverse switch. And I, for the life of me, didn't know where it went, but I just did a bit of quick research, and the reverse switch actually goes down through there and plugs into the bottom of the gearbox on a little tiny pin so I'm just going to wire this through send it through the um, through here somewhere neat and out of the way and I'll actually plug it in um, and that way my reverse lights will work all right so I've um, fed the wire down through the firewall and the gearbox and it's now hanging here um, I'm pretty certain that there's no real negative positive it's just uh, you know a link to send a signal so it doesn't really matter which one goes goes where these are both black wires um, but any hoodies I've given myself just enough length um, and I'm just gonna get this onto the switch Ugh, what a pain in the butt but things like this got to get done I probably should have done this before putting the exhaust on because it's actually really hard to get to. Oh, okay. Actually, I'll put this down and I'll get back to it. You can see what I'm trying to do anyway, so I'll be back. Alrighty, now this is connected. Um, this is not the final install of this plug. This is going to be rewrapped in um, some nice protective covering because this is right next to the uh, exhaust pipe here so um, you know I think this section of the exhaust anyway I would like to wrap it but I'll see how I go but I'll definitely be wrapping this in some kind of protective stuff it does have a little plastic sheet over it that might cover that bend there it's just literally a finger's width away from the exhaust pipe and I think that could be a problem in the long run it'll cook the daylights out of those wires anyway I'm going to pull that back through so it's got a little bit of tautness on it um, that'll lift those wires up just like so and give me another centimeter of clearance and I'm going to make that neat upstairs actually while I'm under here I may as well show you what I've done with the starter motor here so I was really, really worried that the starter motor would have to come out of the car because I didn't test it before I installed it. And because of this here adapter plate um, connecting the gearbox to the, uh, the engine, the bolts that hold the starter motor on are actually fed from this side. So to change that, the gearbox has to come off, which means the engine has to come out, and I was not looking forward to doing it. So I was very lucky that it actually did start. 
So I've hooked up um, the terminal here. There's the positive turbo running um, to there. And then I've got my little signal wire, um, which is right there. And that um, just the very end of it, I'm probably going to put some heat shrink over, but it's fine like that. It's got a little spade clamp on it. And although it's a red cable, I will be painting that black or just changing the cable because that's my earth going from the block to the chassis. Um, but yeah, that's basically that set up. So this guy goes to 12 volt battery power. That one is direct earth to the car where the negative of the battery is also connected to. And then this one right here is the ignition signal with the key. So 12 volt power runs up to the key switch and when the key switch turns on to the start part it connects the uh, the cables together and gives us a signal which starts that up. So yeah, happy that works. Thank God I didn't have to pull the gearbox apart. Oh, and also, um, I learned the hard way once upon a time. Always put new circlips. Oh, I can't reach on new circlips on everything you do. Um, using old shitty ones will cost you majorly down. Uh, down the road so don't be a skimpy cheap butt buy some new circlips they're a couple of bucks and fit them where they need to go it will save you big dollars in the future and it's safe so do it all right so now i've got that threaded up through the fly uh oh boy the firewall i'll just um find a position to route that to there i might cable tie it neatly on something um but for now i can unplug it um and put some wrap around it so that it matches the rest of the car. I'm not doing this now though, I still have to go and buy my felt wrap, which I'll be wrapping the whole wire harness in. Um, but I'm just happy that I found where it lives, which is process of elimination, this job. I'm going with a 40 plus year old loom that's been changed at least two times already. Um, with other people's handiwork, nothing matches up to what, um, you know, the, the wiring diagram or the sheet shows, or well, 90% of it, 50% of it works, 50% of it's been hacked by somebody else in the past. Um, so it is a bit more difficult than just following a diagram. There's a lot of tracing wires to their exact points. Um, for example, this is a black and white um, cable it comes from the ignition key barrel and it says ST which should be the starter um, signal but the car didn't start with that so it was actually this black and white one um, here which is now running down um, towards the starter motor signal which was ST2 on the barrel so all these little things are just a pain in the butt but it's got to be done. Um, I still have to work out my alternator wiring because um, that has to be connected. Um, I'm pretty sure that that lives uh, somewhere <laughs> over here. Here I was just saying that everything's under control. Oh, yeah, I think this is it here. Um, I've got an alternator plug there which has got two wires and then the main white power 12 volt is what I'm stealing at the moment to power up the barrel but yeah that's basically my alternator lead I'll get that wired up when I figure out where each of these wires go onto that but anyway let's keep working on it now here's a question for you smart people that know what you're doing with cars this little sucker coming off the um, master cylinder is a vacuum line so um, the engine is creating um, a vacuum which is helping the 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 opening of the master cylinder which helps push your brakes um, but when you're plugging it into this manifold over here right there which is where it's going to go just run a wire to it, I'm just a wire a hose to it, that's fine. But when that has um, turbo pressure going to it, which means 
it's no longer sucking air like a naturally aspirated vehicle would at the inlet manifold. With a turbo, you're forcing air in, so the, the pressure's opposite. So this is actually forcing air, whatever PSI is going to be on the inside of the inlet manifold, is actually going to be sent to the brake master cylinder. So I don't know if this is actually going to be a correct way of um, using it, but you're never really using your brakes when you're on throttle anyway. So if I'm on boost and this is creating boost pressure, theoretically I shouldn't be able to close or push my foot on the brakes. Like there should be, you know, 10, 15, 20, what, 14 PSI pressure up against this. And hopefully it's not enough for me to not be able to use my brakes, but I will find out. Um, or the thing is that, or, or, or this doesn't go there if this hose doesn't actually go to that point there which I believe it does but it's just interesting you know I thought maybe there's a one-way valve on there I really don't know maybe it won't allow the um the air pressure to go down or maybe there's a one-way valve in here I, I really don't know but um I gotta work that out too you know because what if I want to like put my foot on the brakes and do some burnouts. Huh? 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 What am I going to do then? I'm going to be under boost and I won't be able to use the brakes. But anyway, that's a question for anyone who knows what they're talking about, because I don't. Is that correct? You know, turbo manifold inlet with um, turbo pressure behind it, will that still plug into there and will I still be able to use my brakes? Because normally negative pressure will pull out of that. But anyway, let me know. Uh, so just continuing tidying up, um, I've just cable tied the plug for the oxygen sensor um, just onto the side of one of these little poles here just because it was dangling down and it looked horrible I didn't want that moving so that's nice and solid in position uh, this little plug here looks like arse um, the inside of it right there is all frayed so I am going to pull this apart and try and clean up um, the contact and re-solder that on because um, that I don't think is going to last much longer sadly Alrighty, that's all cleaned up quite nicely. Um, no frayed wires or anything. I'm going to re-plug it onto here. I was going to do it this way, but then I thought that might rub on the um, the water pump thingy, Bobby. So I'm going to go from the top and plug it in. I don't even know what this does, right? Well, I really don't. It could be temp, it could be anything, but it's where it goes. So it's going back there. Oh, come on. Wait, you're so hard. There we go, she's on. She's in place. That'll be tidied up. We're in business. Oh, so after stuffing around with this for quite a while, I uh, found that my negative wire, sorry about the bad video quality, but the negative wire coming off the loom at the back there was not ground. So it's now ground. And what that gave me, with the ignition key on, is lights. Lights are so good. And also, the little thing you turn for the brightness works as well. So right now I'm turning that up and down and I can adjust the brightness. So everything is kind of working. One globe on this side um, is broken, but that's just a globe, which is great. Um, it's not a... It's not a wire. I tested another globe in it. But I'm happy as Larry. Um, you can't really tell that they are actually illuminated. Oh, you kind of can. So yeah, even the clock. Um, oh, I think one of the wires is a bit funny on it. But uh, the clock does actually work, believe it or not. Um, it's just a matter of rewiring all that because... There we go, the clock's going. I don't know exactly what, but there's a wire not quite working. But I'd like the clock to work, just because it's a clock. But I'm really happy. I'm really happy. Progress is slow, but, you know, it, it's good. It's good. Yeah, I think this connection's old. So yeah, it's just a matter of plodding along bit by bit and trying to work stuff out. Alright, next on the list of jobs is um, to check the fuel pump is working and the relay is also working. Before I go and run wire all through the car, I've got the fuel pump out and I'm just going to basically plug it in. Um, I followed a diagram um, that I found on the internet. It was actually made by Zed. 
uh, the guy that made the flanges to fit the VE fuel pump in. Um, I've got the fuel pump relay down there. Um, got the positive wire coming off that. Um, that fuel pump relay should be hooked up to my um, to my mains power here when I plug it onto the battery. So I've got my plus there. I'm just going to run my negative um, straight back down to earth. So I'm just going to make up a quick earth wire. And then we'll turn the key and see if this sucker makes some noise. Alright, so I've just got random bits of wire everywhere. Um, I need to find my little tiny female spade connector. Just uh, give it a quick crimp. This doesn't need to be excessively strong, it's just temporary use. Um, for the sake of testing, but you know, it will work quite fine. Just crimping them for now. Um, and then on the back end, I'll put one of those trims with the holes in it so I can hold the terminal. So I'm just going to earth the side of the wire first to the chassis. I've got a nice 10 mil head of bolt down here. And it's been taking care of all my earth so far, so I'll keep using it. Plug this into the negative side of the fuel pump. And that should be about it. Um, now we'll plug it all up to the um, to the battery now. I'm not going to plug the starter motor in because I don't need the starter motor. It doesn't actually have to turn over, it just needs the relays to activate. Um, I'm just going to make sure my key is off. Which it is. Now it might, it might start the fuel pump because it actually is on accessories, I'm not sure. No, nope, that's fine. So now we have positive running there, we've got that plugged in and negative, which is wonderful. Power's going to the ignition, fuel pump's off. Let's turn the key and see what happens. It's all on, but the pump is not running. Um, why? I don't know, because I'm not a wiring dude. But, we'll unplug it and find out. So, this sucker here, um, relay or whatever the heck it is this one here is clicking no problem but the actual fuel pump one um, is not and I'm just wondering if the wires are simply not in the correct positions or if there's even an earth wire that needs to come off that um, I'll do some tinkering and I'll find out Right, so I've pulled it out, and um, basically the wires were all the wrong way around. Um, the 12 volt feed source was in this socket here. The signal wire coming from the ignition was in a different position as well. So I've got the 12 volt feed plugged in. Now I've got the signal from the ignition coming from um, into that plug. So this one on the right hand side is our ground, and then this sucker is what we plug the fuel pump into. So just to make sure it works, I'm just going to... No, I'll do it properly. No. Nah. Yeah, fuck, I'll do it properly. Okay, I'll do it properly. I was just going to hold the ground against the body of the motor with the fuel pump uh, pump plugged in, but I will actually ground it up properly and we'll um, we'll see if we can get this thing working. It, um, I think it's just a wiring job. I think it was all the way around, uh, the wrong way around. So I'm not... I don't know what I'm doing here, but I'm following a diagram, and it's very simple, and it should be the answer. We'll see how we go. Alright, so my little earth 
uh, Bolt is starting to become quite overpopulated, so good thing it's only for testing. I'll probably spread the earths out throughout the car um, when I'm actually ready to finish the wiring and wrap it up once everything works. But, got my little terminal end, I'm going to stick it in there um, and then turn this thing on and see if we've got a... Uh, well, see if the fuel pump works. So I'll put you guys down. To the earth, then we get the positive uh, signal to the pump. It goes into this one. The middle one in there is pretty much not used. Um, I'm sure it's a double up if you need it, but we don't need it in this case. Um, I'm just gonna stick it back onto the... Actually, we might not need to. I think it might work just like this. Oh, did you hear the goodness? I heard it. So this clicked, and that fuel pump just ran. So that's wonderful. The reason I did that now, just by touching the terminal, is I've got the key in the um, on position or the accessory position. So I'm gonna turn the key off, hook up the positive to the battery, and then see if I can control the fuel pump with the key. All right, so that's in accessory mode. I'm going to turn it all the way off. It should, should, not work. Okay, so that's a problem. I've got the key completely off and um, it's still running. Which means that my ignition signal um, is the problemo. But at least I know the fuel pump works, so I didn't really doubt it anyway, because it's brand new. But yeah. There's a... That's pretty quiet fuel pump, really. I think what I need to do is get from the other relay I'll actually steal the signal wire from that relay and send it to this one as a signal. See how we go. And some more progress. So the previous wiring job on this, um, I have found that this, so I did name it as well, so this black and white wire here coming off the loom um, from the computer, so this is the 1GGTE engine loom which is plugged into the ECU, that is sending me my signal for the, solid, for the little tiny um, relay to turn on. Now the previous owner has, where is this going to stay, the pre, there we go, the previous owner for some reason like this key on signal that I labelled now so I don't forget what it is, um, this black and red one is power 24-7, once on, um, and that is connected from there directly, that probably can come actually from the battery itself but then again it's plugged into the computer so I'll leave it in the computer because that is 12 that, that's power feed so power is coming through this and it actually tags off inside this wrapping to a blue wire which then goes over yonder um, and also a red wire and a green wire the green wire was connected to the relay as an input or a trigger and that was false because when you you know it's on 24 hour power so I'm not going to use this green wire at all so I've just left it down there right now but where was I getting it yeah so this little wire here I'm going to feed into the input signal or the switch signal to the relay and that should give me the pump turning on when it hits um, the on mode on the barrel. But yeah, the previous wiring in this is all over the place and nothing's labelled, so it is a headache trying to work this out. 
I can't even understand what I just explained to you guys, so I hope you guys followed. Man, the previous owner really loved his spade connectors, because um, this is all that's been put on the car through the whole thing. It's all of these spade connectors, and I don't know, I'm not a big fan of them. I know that I'm kind of using these bullet ones at the moment, but at least they cover all of the exposed metal, where the spades leave all this exposed. So for testing, I'd rather use these. But anyway, I've, um, that, that's pure power, that's 12 volt. This here is a signal wire from the ignition. That's now connected to the relay in the correct position. If this all goes well, I should be able to turn the key off in the car here. Like, like so, it's in complete off position. I should then be able to quickly just have a little connection. I'll just put you down for a second. Sorry about that. Um, got the 12 volt positive hooked up. Nothing ran, which is great. Step one. I only want it to run when I actually turn the key onto the on position. So now we're just going to flick it onto accessories. See what happens here. Oh, this is that annoying key that needs two hands. What a pain in the butt, but it works. Um, so now we're on the accessory position. Um, with the accessory position on, um, I'm kind of hoping that I get things like dash lights still. Yeah. Woohoo! Which I do. Ooh. Yeah, very good. Now, if I turn the key to the on position, if all goes well, the fuel pump should run. So here we go. Yeah, boy. That's very good. One thing I did just notice then was um, when the car went to its start position, the fuel pump did lose a bit of power. I'm not sure what that's about, but I'll ask my wiring mate before you know this is finalised. But at least we have now got a circuit that's running the fuel pump. When I get the fuel tank back, I'll be able to install it. That's great. So that's its running position. And it's running. It's back on AC. Turn the whole thing off. We're good. So I'm happy about that. So I'm going to unplug it and go inside. Um, I think that's going to pretty much do me um, for this video anyways. I've done a fair bit of wiring work. I've got rid of a lot of the little niggly things that annoyed the daylights out of me. And it's big steps forward for me. Um, I'm not, like I said so many times, I'm not a wiring guy and it actually is really frustrating trying to work all this out, but power, switch, you know, the unit you're trying to turn on, and earth. That's pretty much wiring in a sense. Um, it's just a matter of figuring out where the wires go and colours and powers and the right type of wire to use for the application, but I'm getting there and so far I'm pretty happy with it and it it's becoming less complicated for me as I'm working things out step by step. So as soon as I finish one little issue, it takes a bit of a weight off my shoulders. So anyway, I'm going to unplug all this. Well, unplug this anyway. Um, I'll leave these wires here just so that I know I'm going to label them to the fuel pump so that I can uh, neaten them up later if I get searching again. Um, all this I'm not going to wrap with wire yet. Sorry, wrap with tape yet because it's, a, it's got more work to be done on it, um, I'm sure. But yeah, pretty stoked. Who knows what the next video is going to be like. I doubt the thing's going to run, but um, we still have to get the fuel tank in, so I'll try and concentrate on that. Cheers.